Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConnor Man at YouTube with a, another 3D printing video. Today we're going to use the Mono X to produce garage kit figure of Gal Gura from Hololive EN, a VTuber on this platform. To warm up, I had to print out, clean up, and paint this 38 millimeter chibi version on a Roomba. Kept the resin skin, great print, fit together very well. It was literally just a two to three hour job from cleaning to adding the last of the paint and hand painting small bits and pieces. For a quick throwaway project, it was a stupid amount of fun though. I've got a guilty pleasure of listening into VTubers while cleaning or doing house maintenance, editing videos, it's something I do consume. On Thingiverse, a model by Inaba, I downloaded around New Year's, of this chibi large Nendroid-ish, which is a Japanese line of toys of a large head, small body, articulated similar to figures, was broken down much like a traditional garage kit and decided to have a crack at it, downloading it, slicing it and giving it sufficient support in a large format and giving it the full treatment as I do with my other anime figures. This is completely experimental and just seeing if I like this sort of modeling or not. I'm already seven large 3D prints deep with the Mono X and dozens with smaller prints. So the settings are all ideal and I know how to dial it in and not come across with errors or models peeling off the bed or sticking to the screen, which is ideal. The Anycubic Mono X review video will cover these topics. Using the indigenous slicer studio, I was able to hollow drill holes and lighten the load as much as possible producing a very cheap print pulling it off the bed quickly giving it multiple wash with methylated spirits alcohol to get excess resin off and rinsed the the difference with tap water allowing the rest to naturally cure under sunlight outside uh, this clocked in under 200 grams around five to six dollars in material costs credit to the mesh designer the sculpt is absolutely wonderful and captured me. The color separation is quite ideal, almost particularly designed for scale modelers and garage kit artists. I assume with the smooth high poly count, this was probably done on some fairly advanced software like ZBrush or a very well tooled and modified blender with animation experience. Instead of washing resin pieces to remove the release agent in detergent. It is sticky and needs curing to be a hard surface. Scar modeling techniques is ideal, more so for plastic, to remove all of the support with side cutters, then trim with a knife and sand with sandpaper before it is too overly hard. You will not encounter issues like air bubbles, but what is possible is Z-axis lines, depending on the quality of the print or pulling of resin, and worse if it's overly exposed with the supports the final nubs can be incredibly hard to remove where you'll have to resort to high grit sandpaper or even power tools like a dremel or sander the part that is the biggest downer besides the z-axis lines is fit it's still experimental how to make these kits come together and this one was a bit uh, problematic with the arms and legs having no tolerance for the peg to go into the hole normally you want it to be loose by about half a millimeter each side. This could be a scaling issue from the experience of the mesh modeler, though not too hard to widen it for my own purposes. The very large pieces, such as the hair and head uh, sockets for the legs, had no issue. Everything was assembled with super glue. Color separatable parts were left separated and any gaps such as the clothing with the arms was filled with sculpting or two-part epoxy putty. I've seen complaints among commission artists but we're in early days of the medium and it's not so much a criticism 
but teething issues. This would have been disappointed if money was spent on the model or mesh file. It occurred to me the flesh is very appealing with the anycubic resins and will keep it to that color. Originally I only used it because it was cheap among the collection. Spraying everything down with super cheap auto automotive primer and lacquer thinner via an airbrush, I found any faults and plugged up Z access lines allowing it to dry, sanding it down and giving it a second coat of primer ready for paint. Any flesh bits were masked down. Going for my typical gradient style, I selected two to three colors per color section and would shade it from a dark to light color for definition and variety. The flesh is still blushed up with a lighter and pinker color and smaller sections are just hand painted to save time not over masking and throwing too much time at this project. Comically I'm still spraying everything for the past two years with my garbage cheap Royal Max 12 volt compressor which still works perfectly well and still getting fantastic results. Being more comfortable with painting faces and getting a new set of paintbrushes I've got the eyelashes eyeliner down pat quite easily. Paintbrushes are a weird beast and it's best to try as many types from name brands to something cheaper and for some reason the synthetic cheap brushes work best in my hand. I really like makeup brushes. My advice is to experiment with art shops that would have the biggest selection from everything with stiff straw to animal hair going all the way down to plastic and synthetic made stuff. Buy a sample of everything, see how you go, especially with brush care which is a uh, big must. Exercised a lot of neat hand painting with this project and with a new set of paint brushes I've acquired from a small localized manufacturer in China. It's so far the best type I've used to date. Still employed a lot of freehand airbrushing, coloring in airbrushing on top to create all the shading and effects that is very typical to the VTuber character. I did take many liberties away from the original color art from the Thingiverse listing and reference to a few fan art and references to the character. No weathering done, clean build. Once all the paint has dried and fully cured, I left alone for about a week for the paint to adhere very nicely and started doing final assembly with super glue and snapping it all together. A friend gave me this very handy little wooden base he bought from Japan many many years ago and mounted her so she wouldn't fall over. Uh, being hollow it's still very head heavy and it cannot stand under its own weight. To prevent paint damage, larger parts were adhered with PVA glue instead. Any hole has been plugged with putty to prevent resin spilling out and ruining the paint and got all assembled on the board. The microphone stand was coated in Molotow liquid chrome on bare resin. I cannot express how much fun I had with this, how much I like it how well it came out. This has got to be one of the best 3D print models I've uh, put out in resin with an ideal finish scheme and looking like the finished reference material uh, excluding any faults or failed printings, large chunks being taken out and major repair work like the Yukari Girls and Panzer figure. This has given me such a big spring in my set step and an excitement for anime figures all over again that I'm very excited to work on more traditional GK and definitely print out one or two more of uh, these toys and even open to commissioning in creating any figures that don't really exist in the GK or existing PVC figure market. That is a separate salt mine issue though with the appeal and the aesthetics of VTubers I would be very excited to make more characters uh, especially from the Ian side of things. More obscure girls that I definitely follow and don't get as much attention. They're very well designed and I can see why they have such an awesome 
awesome following. A nice break in both painting and building from doing a little too many Gundam and military tank projects, especially with the weathering side of things. Plus a chance to practice and being far more precise in my painting, my shading, my colouring, my building, because there's no hiding anything in GK and very bright and vibrant colours that you get with uh, civil and especially anime figurines. Even though with this particular build I find incredibly cute and fun, I'll be forever haunted in having a chibi ninjoid thing in my portfolio, which is amusing. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, until next time, stay tuned for further content. Check out the description section for reference material and links to the original fire. See you later.